Hello, this is Ivan from watchandlearn.com uh, As you can see, I haven't made any videos since like December of 2014 That was because I was going snowboarding and I broke my arm And I haven't been able to use a mouse or keyboard that well for some time But my hand is okay now uh, And I can make new videos So to make up for that, I'm actually going to uh, publish three videos today is going to be a quick three time series about WordPress workflow so I'm going to show you my WordPress workflow so from the beginning to the end so uh, we're not going to go into any specific details about it I'm just going to show you what tools I'm using how I'm using them and so on this might not be the workflow for you this might, might not be the best workflow but it's a workflow that uh, works very good for me and uh, I was developing it through the years so uh, I'm constantly adding something to my WordPress workflow workflow actually uh, actually the latest thing I added to it was about a week ago for deploying databases and actually deploying the whole WordPress sites which I'm going to show you in part 3 so uh, this series is going to be consisting of three parts so first one is uh, local environment so how you work locally uh, second part is uh, WordPress development I'm going to show you the tools I'm using while developing uh, themes for WordPress and the third part is going to be deployment okay so let's get started so I don't know if you're on, on a Mac or a PC uh, or on a Linux machine but here are some alternatives actually the things I'm going to show you now I'm not using them but here are some alternatives to set up your local environment so to work with WordPress you need Apache uh, uh, PHP and uh, MySQL so amp stack to get them <coughs> you sh you can use some programs uh, MAMP is available on Windows now also so you can use MAMP I used to use MAMP on Mac and I'm not very happy with it it's too slow so you can use MAMP uh, you can use XAMP if you're on Windows Linux or uh, OS X so and you can use WAMP uh, if you're on Windows so uh, while I was on Windows I was using WAMP server it work out, worked out pretty well uh, I'm not using any of those tools but if you get wanna get a uh, quick going on your machine with uh, Apache MySQL and PHP you can just uh, install any of these programs so they are one click installers so you just download them, double click them uh, follow the installation process and that's it okay so if you don't want to use these kind of programs as I said they can be slow uh, you can use Vagrant so Vagrant is a virtual box environment uh, for working uh, on your programs or whatever you are doing so uh, the thing with Vagrant is is that you can set up it, uh, set it up so that it uh, it's actually a copy of your uh, development server or your production server, so your live server. You can set up Vagrant to be uh, exactly like the server that your site going uh, that you're going to put your site on it of course takes a little bit of time and a little bit of knowledge but you can do it uh, but for w WordPress development you can just use a vagrant based development environment for WordPress plugin themes of websites I myself never actually ever used vagrant but I heard uh, great stuff about it and if I didn't use the process I'm using right now I will probably be using it so you have this page and you can follow uh, the installation process right here it's not as straightforward as XAMPP, WAMP or uh, MAMP but uh, 
you can set up a pretty good environment and it's going to work pretty well for you uh, the thing I'm using actually is uh, my own amp stack so I'm I installed PHP and Apache and MySQL by hand uh, on on a Mac I don't know I, I don't think you can do that on Windows but you can do that on Linux and you can do that on Mac OS X uh, OS 10 actually not X uh, and uh, the tutorials I followed to make that happen are the tutorials from the coolest guys on the planet by Neil G or, or G so you have actually tutorials for uh, Yosemite uh, Mavericks and Mount Mountain Lion so you have those links right here uh, because every time Mac OS X upgrades for some reason it screws up with part of that installation so when going from Mavericks to Yosemite I have to follow fo follow some of these steps not all of them but some of them but if you are setting up your environment for the first time you will have to follow all of these steps as you can see there are many of them but once you got got it going it works really great so I'm going to install WordPress on this kind of environment right now uh, one thing I like about this is that you can use virtual hosts very easily you can use virtual hosts with uh, MAMP also but if you get a pro version uh, I don't use it with a pro version so I don't use MAMP actually at all so what I'm uh, using uh, virtual host for is to have uh, addresses or, or URLs like this so if I'm going to make a database from for this site that we are going to install right now I would just go to phpmyadmin.dev so you see this dev domain name uh, it's a domain name that my local machine uses so I'm just going to go to phpmyadmin.dev I'm going to log in and I'm going to add new database we're going to call it test site we're going to create it and that's it now we have the database the next thing we're going to do is install WordPress so I'm going to go to download my WordPress uh, in the sites directory I'm going to make a new directory called test site I'm going to create it and I'm just going to drop this WordPress 4.1.1 zip right here okay so right now I'm going to go to forklift and I'm going to go to test site and I'm going to unpack this right here I'm not needing this zip file anymore okay so we have our WordPress files right here so as I've shown you I'm using virtual hosts so uh, PHP my admin uh, .dev is uh, virtual host for my PHP my admin so we're going to make virtual host for this site which is going to be test site .dev so I'm going to do this okay and as you can see I have many virtual hosts here so I'm going just going to take the last one copy it paste it right here and I'm going to uh, call this test site dot dev and I'm going to change this directory right here as you can see when you follow uh, when you follow uh, 
this tutorial on how to make your own Apache MySQL and PHP installations uh, you end up with uh, storing all your sites in sites directory so that's why that's why uh, I'm using users even sites test site test site okay so this isn't going to work just yet to make it work we're going I'm going to have to go to my console and just do sublime hosts there's just one more step I, I also copied this paste it and call it test site so this still isn't going to work because I have to restart my Apache server so I'm just going to do up restart and that's it so it should work now also I want to show you something else so as you can see I use commands vhosts uh, and up restart right here so these are not real commands you can't use them on your system right now uh, these are aliases so let me just show you what's going on here so sublime and I'm going to open a file called bash profile so as you can see I have my aliases right here so you can do this if you're on Linux or on Mac OS 10 but if you're on Windows you probably won't have this so I have alias for vhosts and it does sudo subl etc apache2 extra and so on so it opens this file in sublime text so I can edit my virtual host uh, app restarts restart does this command sudo uh, apache stl restart so that's what it does okay now we should go and install our wordpress as you can see i just went to this test site.dev address uh, and uh, we just follow up we follow with this wordpress installation so i'm going to choose english continue let's go uh, database name test site username is Ivan so I have two users for my database one is root and one is Ivan password is test123 database on is on localhost and just submit it ok run the install so this is our test site and the username is going to be Ivan so uh, this is just a quick pro tip for WordPress security don't ever name uh, your main your super user the uh, admin because uh, when hackers uh, wanna hack your site if they're using brute force technique they're going to be usually using admin as a username and then go through all your passwords so you just uh, uh, make a different username and uh, your site is already like 35% more secure so one more reason be, uh, I'm using virtual hosts is so that uh, LastPass can remember my sites so if all of my sites were on localhost slash I don't know test site the LastPass would remember all of them uh, for that domain because the domain name would always be localhost but by using different domains for different sites I can uh, make LastPass remember all my passwords for all my local development sites o of course you can say here why don't you use something simple for the password uh, I don't use something simple for the password because I would probably forget to change it once the site goes live so what I'm going to do now is make a strong password not an easy password copy it and paste it right here okay 
and of course if uh, your site isn't going live right away but it's going to some test server so you can show your client how the site is progressing you should always check this off so you don't want Google to find uh, your test site you want it to find your live site so you should remember to turn this on once your site goes live and just click install WordPress okay log in And I'm going to save this password in my last pass. Another pro tip, use last pass. I don't know passwords for any of my sites. <laughs> last pass knows them. I don't know anything. Okay, so that's it. We installed WordPress on our local environment. Uh, in the next episode, I'm going to show you uh, my development process. So what I'm using to develop my themes. See you in the next one and if you like this video please like it below, uh, follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, I'm not on Google+, Plus. actually I am but I'm not doing anything on it, so follow me there, like this video if you like it and please subscribe, see you next time.